So you mentioned one Bears Hall of Famer, Brian Erlacher. Yeah. The hope is that Devin Hester will get that call tomorrow. Yeah. Um, which would be really a uh, a big deal because you're talking about a returner, really a specialist that would be going to the Hall of Fame. And, and, and my guess is, I don't know if it's going to happen tomorrow, but it seems like there's enough momentum that Devin Hester is going to get in the Hall of Fame. When you, when you played in the same era at the same time. Yeah. Uh, I think you guys overlapped in that playoff game, too, in 2006. That would have been his rookie year. He was a young buck. He yeah. was a young buck. I was on my way out. But uh, it's really funny. Devin was in high school when we met. I was training down in Miami, actually in Fort Lauderdale. And I was taking uh, some of my guys from the Seahawks, and we were going through this. My, I had an Olympic sprint coach, Joe Gentry. He's, he's in heaven now, and but he was a great guy. But he had given me all these drills. We were in Florida, and I was like, hey, let's get some guys together, and we go run them. So we're at this park, and I'm ripping these guys through these drills. And it was it was very intense and hard. And we see these high school kids come up. And we could tell, like, this little one with the braids was a little bit faster than everybody else. I said, hey, young guy, you want to come work with that with us? He worked out. He did the drills. And I could say, man, super talented, super hungry, super humble. I was like, man. I said, what's your name? Devin Hester, <laughs> you know, and so, so just watching him and seeing so how you he saw did, it coming a little bit. Yeah, but he was he was so like hungry to be great. You know what I mean? And so, you know, is he was he going to be like you know Terrell Owens as a receiver? Nope. You know what I mean? But he was going to find out what he was good at and go be great at it. And so, yeah, I was I was really happy for him, and I'm hoping that he does get the nod. I call him the most exciting player I've ever watched and and he's not the the greatest but he's exciting yeah. in the sense that anytime a ball was getting kicked and he was back hey, there man, hold your breath you, you it was one of those things like you couldn't miss a like you could not miss that play yeah um and so to me the impact he had on special teams in that manner to make it that exciting that that's a guy that should be in the hall of fame in my opinion yeah, I think that, you know, it's really weird. Everybody's asking me about the Hall of Fame. Like, I've been on Radio Row. Everybody's like, hey, what about the Hall of Fame? I'm like, look, I don't know how they do the awards, but I think that there's a couple things. If you change your organization, you have stats that break it up, and and you actually doing your job shifts the game. You know what I mean? You know? Um, then all the rest of it now goes down to numbers. And so I think Devin did all those things. You know what I mean? He made his team. I mean, wasn't Rex Grossman a quarterback that went to us? Yeah, <laughs> you know what that mean? was you that know? year. I mean, we love yeah. Rex, but come on. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, 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 but it's, it's plays that Devin would make that sets up the field. And everybody had that fear like, oh, man, what's, what's this guy about to do? You know? And the stats, I mean, more touchdowns than anybody else as a return man, they all kind of fit, fit the story. I want to jog your memory a little bit here uh, and ask you about those Bears teams that you played against, including that year in the playoffs. Um, but because I, I don't know how many games you would have played against Lovey Smith's defense, but the Bears are, it seems like, kind of going back down that road here with the coach they just hired, Matt Eberflus from the Indianapolis Colts. Yeah. Um, he's not like running a straight Tampa 2, but it's a lot of those principles. Yeah. Um, wh- what was it like running – being the running back going up against those defenses when you face them? You know, um, I was very excited because, you know, them, the Ravens back in the day when Ray Lewis was there, they had the challenge that said, hey, here's the normal X's and O's of football, but then you got some guys that are special at their job that actually defy the X's and O's. And so not only did you have to beat the X's and O's, then you had to go beat the guy that's making the X's and O's especially hard. And so our time against the Bears, you know, we played them in the playoffs in 06. When they went, um, they beat us in overtime. And we really thought that we were going to be back-to-back Super Bowl teams, and they beat us. Um, it, was really a, it was really a great game. Now, I feel like I got off on them. I, I can't remember how many yards I had, but I know I had I looked it up. You went over 100, yeah, and yeah. you had two touchdowns yeah, yeah. So, in that yeah. game. So, like, I, I, remember, <laughs> I remember that, but I just remember there was times in the game where you felt like, oh, if I don't make this play – we might not gain a yard, you know? And so, like, I kind of like that back-against-the-wall kind of feel um, because they uh, – it because that's what makes – that's what pulls out greatness, you know what I mean? And so that's the desire for every player on the play is to get on the field, to go give out all the talent that you have, and then actually somehow form, form it to become great. And, uh, and that's what you get out of those kind of bear teams. You know, Tampa was good at that, the Bears, the Ravens, you know. Those, those teams that said if you're going to do anything, you better be great. And I kind of like that.